Greetings, everyone. We are getting near the end of this semester. You should have started the Plant Growth Regulator Unit, which is our next to last unit. Some things as you're studying that unit to remember. We use a lot of plant growth regulators primarily in the ornamental side of greenhouse crops production, not nearly so much on food crops because of labeling issues. And in those ornamental crop areas, most of the growth regulators are actually growth retardants. Things like bonsai, paclobutrazol, um, psychocell, B9, etc. They basically function by inhibiting gibberellin synthesis. And by doing that, resulting in shorter, stockier plants, typically with shorter internodes, uh, often darker green foliage, but they are designed to be growth retardants to give us the shorter, stockier, stronger plants. Also, to some extent, to the sort of slow growth and hold plant materials. All of the growth regulators, though, are not growth retardants. We have a few other types of growth regulators. Uh, for example, Florel, whose active ingredient is ethophon or ethophon phosphonic acid which is often used to knock off the flower buds off of plants and stimulate vegetative growth and branching uh, before we allow them to flower. Or some of the things like gibberellins and cytokinins and some of the combinations that are used to do things like stimulate branching or even induce flowering in certain species. So we have the, all of these different growth regulators. You should understand those growth regulators uh, what they do, why do we use them. You sh you'll want to know what the active ingredient is in a given growth regulator. Uh, you'll want to know what are the basic ranges, concentrations, that would be reasonable for each of those growth retardants. Not all the nitty gritty exactly this part per million or exactly that part per million. But would you know on an exam question, for example, uh, what would be a reasonable concentration to apply uniconazole as a foliar spray? Would you know that it's, it's just a few parts per million oftentimes, not thousands? You know, psychocell we may apply at 1500 ppm parts per million, uh, where uniconazole, the active rate that we use, or the rate that we use, might be down at 5 to 10 ppm. So I want you to be able to understand those ranges of applications that we might use. Understand the different methods of application. They may be sprays, they may be substrate drenches, they may be bulb soaks, it could be plug dips, and kind of understand uh, not only concentrations that we apply that would be reasonable to each, use each of those growth regulators, but uh, what are the methods that we apply them. Uh, you really should understand how to do those part per million calculations as well. How would you mix up solutions of those growth regulators? And as I did with fertilizer calculations, I'll be sending you some videos to just give you more examples of how to work plant growth retardant calculations. Um, go through, do the unit as you usually do. Again, focusing on understanding those things. What are the growth regulators? What do we use them for? Uh, what are the active ingredients? What are concentrations you'd expect to use them at? What are methods of applications of growth regulators? How would you do part per million calculations? Everything in that unit would be testable, but that would be the really most important things to, to learn from that particular unit.